All right, so today I kind of wanted to wrap up um, how to texture your uh, your coins. I wanted to go through the baking process for you guys today. Um, I'm going to check your threads once again to see where everybody's at. And um, uh, hopefully you guys are making some good progress on uh, that stuff. So let's... Let's do this, let's do this, let's start by Okay So let's take a look um, And you guys need to complete your drawing assignments as well Right, your drawing assignment is in here so I'm going to post another one this week and you guys need to, you know, start getting on these. Alright, so let's take a look at the student threads. So have you gotten a chance to uh, start the low poly? Okay, you have it. All right. All right. Nothing in here. Nothing in there. How's it going, folks? Okay, so where's your update? Everybody should have 3ds Max now. Amaro or Elmer. You guys should have uh, 3ds Max now. All right, uh, Franklin, did you get this guy fixed? Hold up. Yeah, post with whatever you have. Just post whatever you have. All right, Franklin, uh, did you get this guy fixed? Would you at least start on your low poly? Franklin's here. Okay, Raymond. Yeah, this looks good, man. Uh, how's your low poly coming at all? Still this thing, this this little thing still bugging me. Uh, Angel, is there any updates? Julian. Okay, so updates. Any updates? Is he in here? No. No, he's not. Okay. David, 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 what's up, man? You've had this for the longest. Where are the updates? Okay, so, Eddie. Uh, have you gotten a chance to start trying out the low poly? No, not yet. I have a bunch of family obligations come out, but not yet. I was planning to do that tonight. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you for letting me know. All right. Let's see. Sergio updates. Please. You so okay, so 
Alexis, you should have gotten this software fix. Updates. All right, guys, I'm I'm commenting in your uh, thread, so if you're if you're not here and you get you know you see this, definitely update as to whatever you have. Okay, Devon, did you get a chance to put these together and fix the issues you were having? Yes, I just needed to take screenshots of those. They're on my main computer right now, um, so I can get them in by the end of school today. All right, thank you. And start on the low poly as well. So we, I want the low poly and texture to be done by the end of this week. All right, so that, should, that shouldn't be too long from now after I show you guys. Uh, how to do this so uh, yeah all right thanks for letting me know you also want the still life yes yes still life as well still life is due this week I'm posting another one uh, Wednesday so uh, that one should already been done mm -hmm. all right April 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 where is she at? here Updates. I know you've got it now. At the very least, I know you've got this. So, all right. So now let us take a look at 3ds Max and where we left off. All right. So last class we left off right here. We had just unwrapped our low poly and we had exported them out for a texturing inside of Substance Painter. All right, you guys should all have Substance Painter as well. It's, it should be part of the suite you guys have. I told you guys a little something about uh, smoothing groups. Um, it's, you know, turn on Turbo Smith. Um, based on your smoothing groups, you can get different things to happen. So if I turn off my smoothing groups, Turn them on, right? If I told it to smooth based on my smoothing groups, it can have different effects on my model. I can add uh, geo and stuff to it like that. So, um, and that's just based on the kind of smoothing groups that I have. So, if I go, um, let's see. No. So I'm gonna clear my smoothing groups and then it's turbo smooth. See how smooth everything is? All right? But then if I tell it, remember, I'm just trying to hammer this point home about the smoothing groups. Um, if I tell it to auto smooth at 45 degree angles, all right, it's gonna give me a different interpolation. It's gonna harden the edge right here and then everything else is gonna be flat. But if I go and do the smooth by 30, do 30 auto smooth right it's gonna harden these edges so I know whenever I go to turbo smooth this is gonna be separate this is gonna be separate this is gonna be separate watch so now when I do my smoothing group that's what I'm getting all right so but here's my low poly right here so my low poly is good to go I've already exported I showed you guys how to do that in the previous video so inside of Substance Painter, I just opened up Sub Substance Painter. Uh, if you guys have never opened up Substance Painter, this is the, the perfect little intro into Substance Painter. Um, it, it's got your shelf, which is all your assets and materials over here to the left hand side. Uh, this is your texture set settings, your layers uh, right here, your properties and your Python console if you know how to write. Uh, any commands or anything like that that's where it is okay so this is your perspective your uh, camera this is how you would render out your file uh, your tab here has your uh, new open recent files uh, you can even open sample projects to see how things are done which I always do to just to see how uh, they handle different uh, aspects of their stuff so 
the toolbar uh, has your window, your settings, your uh, layers. You can show your shader settings and it'll pop up the window. You can definitely grab and move around whatever you want. This is not how everybody starts up by default. I think your shelf starts off by default like down here. So this is probably what yours looks like. But I don't like it being like this, so I move my shelf right over to the left. So I have like a nice space in the middle where I can just view my model, my object, and everything else is to my left and my right. This is my personal, you know, little little configuration. You guys can set it up however you want. It's up to it's really up to you. Um, but this is how I I, uh, I set mine up. So your texture list is going to be here. Let's just dive in, and you guys will understand as as we go on. So let's do file, and then we're going to do new. All right. So this little uh, uh, tab is going to pop up in the new uh, PBR metallic roughness is going to be the shader uh, parameters or the template we're going to use because. Uh, the idea is that eventually this is going to go into a, a game engine like Unreal or we're going to be using a PBR metallic. This is just a metallic roughness uh, workflow. And you guys will understand workflows as the class progresses. I'm going to give a lecture uh, next class on just uh, the next aspect of this, which is like normal maps and stuff like that. And we're going to build uh, two uh, materials and stuff like that. But uh, this is... Uh, this is pretty much what we're going to use. We're going to use PBR Metallic Roughness. Uh, the 1024 resolution is fine. Uh, let's see. Normal Map DirectX is fine. This UV workflow. I'll leave everything else. We don't need to import cameras. We don't need to auto unwrap our UV because we've unwrapped it ourselves back in 3ds Max. So we do not need to uh, auto unwrap anything. Do not check that button. Uh, and then you want to select a file. All right. So you just give it a second. This is something else I was working on. So I think it's on my desktop, my coin model. So we're going to do exports fall. So we're going to open up our low poly, right? This is what we want to bring in here. You want to bring in your low poly model into uh, Substance Painter first. You hit OK. And it's going to show us our low poly model. All right. So let me turn on no board so you guys can see exactly uh, what I'm clicking here. All right. So now if I if I just scroll backwards, you can see that my coin, it looks just like it does inside of a, a 3DS Max. I've set it up so that my smoothing groups are set this way and we will see how it bakes. You know, I might not like how the smoothing group does the baking and I might switch to the smoothing group and then just come back in here and uh, fix that. All right. So let's let's get it going. All right. So the first thing I want to do now is I want to go inside of my texture set settings. Let me pull this this drop down a little further so you guys can see everything that's in here. This is this panel right here contains all the parameters for our channels, right? So whenever you're making materials, you're making materials in the new way of making materials, you're making a base color, a height, a roughness, a metallic, and a normal map. That's the workflow we're going with. This is the PBR work workflow. It's a physically based workflow. All right, and in whenever you're using a uh, base color instead of diffuse, which is the old way of doing things, what you're substituting uh, for is that you're adding what is called a metallic map, and that says that anything that is closer to black is going to be represented as uh, shiny, and everything white is going to be represented as rusty, or I think it's vice versa. I think yeah, black is rusty, white is shiny. So you'll get a, a, a map, right, that you're making that tells if your object is shiny or if your object is uh, closer to matte, right? And that's how we deal with things a lot in, uh, whenever we're texturing things is we try to decide, all right, is this object that we're texturing right now, is it a metal, which is an uh, uh, electric conducting uh, object, or is it a, a, a dielectric, which is a non uh, electric conducting material. So like skin, right? That's dielectric. 
Uh, you're not you're a poor conductor of electricity, like fruit skin and and different things like that. Things that aren't metal, we treat we call those dielectrics and uh, objects that uh, are metal and close to metal. We call those uh, uh, electric conducting materials, which are um, this is the essentially the PBR workflow. So uh, this is going to be a metal. So we're going to have that. Another thing we might ever you know we might want to add. Um, like a glossiness map or opacity map. If it has opacity, we might wanna have scattering and scattering refers to the skin of things. So like if you can see the light that passes through your skin right here, right? You might wanna add a scattering map to tell the computer, hey, this, this thing has flesh or has some sort of skin or some sort of cloth. So I want you to let light pass through. And that's what the scattering map does. Uh, the specular map deal, deals, deals, deals with the uh, specular intensity and the specular level deals with, deals with the specular level. It's, the names are pretty, um, they're pretty straightforward. And then you can even set up user, user ones as well. So most of the times I'll come in here, I'll add like an emissive or an opacity or a scattering or even an AO map, right? So sometimes I'll do that, but for this, this is just a metal coin. We don't need to do any of that. What we're really, really here for, right? What we're here for today is the are these baking options, right? And in these little tabs right here, if you've pre-done your own materials, if you've pre-baked it somewhere, you can still bring in your materials just by clicking this and it'll direct you to where you need to go to pull those up. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to hit this uh, bake. Um, I want to hit this bake mesh maps and I'm going to pull this tab up and this is where we're going to load in our high poly mesh right here. So high poly parameters right here. We're going to load in our high poly mesh by clicking this little piece of paper that looks like it's folded on the corner right here. So we're going to find our high poly map and uh, our high poly coin, which is right there. We're going to hit open up right there. So now it's been loaded. It's been loaded into this section and it's going to use that to bake all of the detail from that high poly to this low poly uh, map. So do we have a cage that we've set up? We haven't set up a cage inside of uh, 3ds Max, so we don't need to, to use that. Uh, you can save a cage as like a, I think an OBJ file and it'll use that mesh to figure out how far you want the rays or the light rays whenever it's baking to uh, how far you want it to go. So the cage would deal with essentially, right, you'd be manually setting the max frontal uh, distance and the max rear distance. And this is how far the light is going to be uh, bouncing, right? What this is doing what this is, this baking parameter, this baking box is just saying, all right, I want you to tell me how far you want me to bounce these rays from the low poly to the high poly to grab the information that I need. If I bounce it too far in, I'm going to go way too far into the high poly and I'm going to bake something from the inside, right? And uh, rather than something that you want, like something on the surface or how far away do you want me to go back out to see if I can catch objects. So you might have like things dangling or, you know, just things that are, maybe it's on the face or if it's glasses, something that's dangling off, right? How far do you want me to bake to see if I can grab that detail? Or do you just want me to stay on the surface? Uh, the base settings right here, are, they're pretty fine, right? Like I, I usually use this as a test and then depending on what I get, I'll start to dial it in. So let's change our output map to, uh, 1024 because for a coin I mean you don't need that much it's just it's overkill all right so world space normal that's fine ID map uh, yes no we don't need an ID map for this no we do not need an ID map we do want to uh, do a an ambient occlusion uh, I usually set mine to uniform I never self occlusion always linear uh, let's do smooth uh, and then let's go to my curvature, uh, generate for mesh. Yeah, that's fine. I usually leave those settings. Position, I do. And thickness, right? I remember I talked about thickness in the sense of like if you're dealing with skin and things like that. We're not dealing with anything like that. This is a little metal coin. So instead of giving the computer this extra job to do, let's turn that off. 
we don't need that uh, in there so that's perfectly perfectly fine so we've got our normal our world space normal and if we scroll back up uh, we're gonna see these little anti-aliasing settings right here uh, I'm gonna set it to two by two because uh, none it just gives you like little stair step jagged lines wherever your lines are gonna be like right in here you might get some stair stepping uh, and you know two by two is good four by four is even better eight by eight at that point it might take you know an hour or so to render out your uh, your your to bake out your maps and you're gonna it starts to get fall into the the law of diminishing returns depending on what you're trying to do and I'll explain a little more of that later I'm just uh, I'm just kind of running through this so you guys understand uh, what is going on here all right so now let's just do a, a test bake so you guys see uh, what happened. So let's do big selected textures. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. So this is what I talk about with that max frontal and rear distance, right? So it went too far in. So it baked like some crazy, crazy nonsense into our, uh, our model. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back into our bake mesh settings and we're going to do point 001 and then let's now bake that. Okay, let's do point 001. I think that's what it is. Now let's bake that. Okay. Okay, so we need to we need to make the rear distance go further is what I'm seeing. So boom. Alright. So the further I put that rear distance, the further it can catch. So like I was saying before, it's telling it to bounce that light so far back and to grab that information for us. But if it doesn't have that to grab, then uh, you know, if that light ray doesn't bounce far enough, it's not going to catch anything. And I still think I might need to to bounce it. I don't think that's good. I think I got it all. I think I got it all. So let me see what my rear distance is. So my rear distance is 0.1. Let's do 0.2. Will I go too far? No. No, it went just right. Yeah, so I think 0.02 for mine is fine. And you guys might need to test yours and to dial it in to see uh, what you're going to get, right? And now you can see in these mesh map settings, right, all the maps that we just baked have now populated in here. So you've got your normal, your world space. So to cycle through all the maps, I'm just hitting B on my keyboard. So this cycles through all the maps we just created, the curvature map, uh, the world space normals, the actual normal map. See, this is an issue right here. This is why I might go back and change my smoothing groups to be like all smooth, like just clear out the smoothing groups and uh, let it render because I'm getting some weird edges that I don't like from how it's solving these, uh, these corners right here. So. I just might go back and fix that and, and so that I can get a, a better bake in there. All right, so because I'm getting these weird lines right here as well and I'd like to get that stuff like that fixed off. All right, so little things like that. That's the, that's the, so let's go F1. This is gonna show you, if I hit F1, this shows you your, uh, your normal map or your your 2d map and your 3d map at the same time so if I want to go back to my material to see what everything looks like on top of each other all I have to do is hit M on the keyboard and it goes back to that so F1 F2 F3 all relate to your uh, viewing options so if I hit F1 I'm seeing my uh, 2d map which I you know baked out or which I UV'd out in 3ds max and in the 3D view uh, of the actual uh, model. Uh, F2 is just the model itself, and F3 is just the, uh, 
uh, the UVs itself. So I usually work like this so I can see my model. You know, I told you I like to like to have my my model is the biggest thing, and I'm I'm still I'm really not digging how this is. It doesn't look bad, right? Like my only problem is these anti-alias edges, right? Um, one way we could fix that, you know, another way we could fix that is um, we could up this anti-aliasing settings right here, and that'll take care of uh, some of it. So let's do that, and then let's go to 2048, and I'll show you guys uh, the difference. And because it's a coin, right, it's going to be a lot... Um, it's going to be a lot faster, but if you start thinking about how m many objects you can have in the scene and different things like that, uh, you're going to start getting into some issues. So, like, it's it's gotten, you know, moderately better, but I think if we uh, go in and fix those smoothing groups, I think we might get a better, better, uh, better bake out of this. But, yeah, and I think it just has to do with our smoothing groups. So and you guys know, you know, if I go here, let's let's go here. This shows my wireframe, so you guys can see uh, what I was working with before. So you guys know that well. This is the low poly with the high poly baked on top of it. So that is the entire process right there, right? Like now you guys understand. Okay, so this is how they make the games. They make all this high poly fun detail, and then they bake all that stuff onto the low poly, and that's what you guys are seeing here. All right, so. Um, Let's see. Let me let me grab this right. So right now we've got this smooth thirty. So like I said, like I was saying before, my smoothing groups. You, you guys can literally see my smoothing groups. This dark shaded area, it's its own smoothing. This flat area is its own smoothing. This side is its own smoothing. This is its own smoothing. Like you guys can see that those different facets and how that smoothing group has selected and and, and separated those smoothing groups based on. Uh, their angle, their facing angle. So any angle that's facing in a similar direction, right? It's making all of those together. And that might be giving us some issues in our normal map baking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just clear it all out, right? Clear it all out and then just throw one smoothing group on everything. Just throw one smoothing group on every single thing, right? Now I'm going to select my low poly file export selected and now let's find our uh, coin export folder so in the coin model let's see exports for coin LP let's do underscore v1 so this is version 1 so now we're going to do the same things. The Z is up uh, in 3ds Max. I'm going to hit OK. OK, I don't care about uh, that. That's fine. Thank you very much. So let's see. Let's file, save as. Let's do coin. Void with a void. OG. Alright, so let's do save. Alright, so now I'm just going to hit file new and then we are going to uh, select our new low poly and then OK. Uh, let's just discard all this stuff. Alright, so now you guys can see how we've got just one smoothing group. So everything on this coin is completely smooth it's beautiful look at that all right and i think that's going to give us a better baking results but i'm more of a uh, shower instead of a teller so let's uh, let's show you guys so now let's go and now select our high poly again we're going to uncheck the ones we unchecked before which is the uh, position the thickness uh the curvature is fine ambient occlusion uh uniform uh, let's go smooth instead of linear for the attenuation and let's turn on um, 
let's do two by two at 1024 and we're going to increase our max rear distance to 0.2 because we know that now we need a decent max rear distance just to bake our, our maps and now let's bake selected and voila hit ok and now you guys can see we're not getting that weird uh, that weird anti-aliasing edge on any of our contours right like you guys can see the difference it's seamless it looks much much better right I can still see these geometry hits from our geo right because that's what that's the construction of it but now it's holding those edges a lot better and it's not giving us that weird uh, that weird smoothing group issue all right so that's what I wanted to show you guys right I wanted to show you guys the mess up and then I wanted to show you guys the fix for that because you guys might be getting a similar issue. You guys might be wondering, what is going on? Well, it might be your smoothing group. You might need to go inside of your smoothing group to check, uh, to check the model to see what's really going on with that. All right, so just like that, we've got uh, our, uh, our final coin, low polyed, uh, baked the, the maps out, all right? And uh, with this, let's start, let's start texturing this, right? Let's start texturing this. And I'll show you guys how to texture it from the ground up. So as I'm holding shift and right clicking, I'm not moving around some sort of light. What I'm actually moving around is I'm rotating the environment around. And you guys can't see that right now, but I can show you how to get to that. So if I go to my uh, environments right here in my little shelf, right? This is the shelf right here. Think about it as your shelf. Uh, of tools that you have to use. So this is my shelf. Uh, this is where I have my masks, my materials, my tools. But if I go to my environment, I can actually change the environment that it's sitting in, right? I can just drag and drop this new environment in here at any point in time and get a different lighting scenario uh, than I originally had. So these are more studio-like uh, lightings, lighting setups that I can use. Right, and I can't see them right now, but if I wanted to, all I would have to do is go into the the environment settings right here. So here are my display settings. So if I turn up my environment opacity, it's going to show my environment. So if I drop this guy in here, you can see my environment. And right now it's blurred. If I turn down that blur, whoa, you can see that it's living in this environment. So if I hold down shift and I'm rotating around, what I'm actually doing is I'm rotating uh, the environment. Sorry to make you guys sick if I'm, uh, if I'm doing that right now. Uh, but that is how you would move the environment. But I don't want to see that. Uh, so I would turn up the blur or just at, at least turn off the opacity. And that's what I see with a lot of you guys' this stuff is... Uh, you guys are leaving your your environment opacity on, and all, don't don't do that. That's highly tacky. Nobody needs to know that what you know. I just need to know the lighting information. All right, so uh, let's go back to I think our base is this guy right here. This guy might be a little too blue, but I, I dig what's going on here. So we can close this guy out. This display settings has a lot more. Uh, more to it like I can change my uh, my wireframe color here right I can change it to black if I wanted to do some wireframe renders and stuff like that and I can even increase the opacity to make it very very noticeable if that's something I'm trying to do uh, you know but that's that's not uh, that's not what you guys are here for right now we're just here to show you guys how to actually texture this all right so instead, you know, uh, what you guys would probably start doing is you guys just drag and drop. Like right? this is the easiest way to add textures to your, you know, you just drag and drop something from uh, this library of materials and smart materials that you have. But I want you guys to have a different way of going about things. I want you guys to have a different way of going about things. And the way is we're going to build our uh, coin material from scratch. And I'm going to show you guys the PBR uh, workflow by doing so. I'm going to show you guys how to work in a, a photo real uh, environment by uh, just working with some eyeballing tricks and 
uh, just, you know, thugging it through. All right, let's do this. So the first thing I want to do is uh, I want to add a fill layer. All right. So in my properties here, right, in my properties, it's going to bring up uh, all of the attributes for a material for me. So if you look in this material section right here, it's giving me the option for color, height, roughness, metal, metallic, and um, normals. I said metal. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's start by turning on the color. We're gonna also uh, turn on the roughness. We're gonna turn on whether it's metallic or not. We're going to turn on the height map because this is going to give us some height information and we're going to turn on our normal map. All right. So this is how you would go about turning on and turning off certain attributes that you want and you don't want. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find a uh, the base color for uh, gold. So to do that we can just use this color picker select a gold like texture or if I wanted I can open up a piece of reference and just select from it so let's see it's going to the assignments and I want to pick from that gold right there. So I'm just going to move it a little off screen. And in my color selection, I'm just going to drag off screen. And it's going to let me pick this material. Let me see if I can show it to you guys. So I'm going to just, yeah, it has, you, have, you need to have two monitors. But let me, let me pull it this way, pull this guy over like so. So you guys can see what I'm talking about. Right. So I'm gonna, in my color selection here, I'm gonna click the color picker and it's gonna let me select any of this that I want. Now that I've selected my gold, all right, this is the, the base color that I want. I can turn on the height, turn on the roughness. Actually, I'm going to show you guys the metal first. All right, because right now it's saying it's not metal. But if I take this all the way over, it's going to change it into a metal. So let me turn off my base color just so you guys can see that now it's a metal. So if I turn on my roughness, this, this is gonna tell me how shiny or rough the surface of this metal is, right? So is it completely chrome when it's black or rough when it's white and matte, all right? So that's what this is telling me. So I want my coin somewhere right there. Right, I'm just eyeballing it from this guy. All right. So I'm just eyeballing it, eyeballing it. it. Looks like it's got the same kind of reflectivity. Because, Jesse, you can't really see. It's not like a mirror reflection. So it's not going to be all the way like this where... This is like chrome. It's gonna be somewhere off of it where it's got blurry reflections and we're getting this uh, anisotrophic uh, banding going on right here. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to replicate. All right, so we've got some of that going on our model as well. So this is about as shiny as it should be. Now I can turn the color 
back on right I want to pick okay so the next thing we can do in our uh, So we really don't need any normal map information, but we could add it if we wanted to, right? So another thing that, another cool thing that you can do is, you make this bigger now. So another cool thing you can do here is, in your roughness, you can throw in some of these smart masks in some of these uh, materials and stuff to, to really make your, um, make your material kind of kind of start to look worn and aged. So let me, let me throw one of these just so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so I can throw, you know, uh, a dirt mask into, onto it. But for the material we're going for, it's supposed to be this clean Mario coin. So this is just perfect, All right? So I don't want to go too deep into uh, dirtying stuff up right now. I think you guys just need to get this from uh, 3ds Max to Painter to baking your textures, and then give me a render uh, where it's going to be like the it's going to be like the uh, high poly one you did, where it's a three quarter front and then a side one. Just like that, back to back to back. And in here, uh, you want to go to rendering. If you want to get to rendering this guy out, right? So you want to render this guy out. You're saying, whoa, Ty, I'm done. I filled, uh, let's see, gold material. I have done the job, Ty. I am ready to turn this into you for a grade. All right, well, then you need to go and hit the little camera icon. The camera icon is gonna take you into the render settings. Ooh, render settings, more render settings. Now look at this, we're in a peaceful meadow in the Swiss Alps. Beautiful, garbage, I do not want this. Do not lay your object down on this kind of surface. I don't want to see any of this, right? It looks cool and all, but I don't want to see this, right? Uh, what I want is for you guys, I want you guys to go into the settings for this and you guys are going to turn off the ground. You're going to float this guy right in the air. All right, so to do that, let's find uh, the settings. in the environment all right so in the environment settings uh right here it says sphere with ground let me let me see if i can i don't know if i can there we go there we go all right so right where it says sphere with ground you can drop that down and i want it to be uh let's see in in ooh, just a sphere and the ground, no, no ground. Let's try infinite sphere. Infinite sphere, no ground, and we're gonna turn on clear color. So now it's gonna give you a defaulted gray material and this, my good boys and girls, is perfect. This is perfect, this is what I wanna see right here, all right? So now that you have your model, how does the rendering inside of Substance Painter work? Well, the way it works is it works in uh, an iterative fashion in the sense that it is going to continuously get better until it reaches one or two thresholds. And those thresholds are either it hits the maximum amount of samples that you set for it or the maximum amount of time that you have allotted for it, right? So now if we look in this top right bracket right here, what you're gonna notice is there is a resolution setting, uh, there is a scene size, 
there are the iterations, and there is the render time. All right. So what uh, iRay does, which is the renderer for uh, Substance Painter, is what iRay does is it uh, it renders over time. It's going to say how many iterations do you have set up. So let me pull this down for you. So in my sample count, I've got to set up to a minimum samples of five and a maximum sample uh, of uh, a thousand. So it's going to say, you know, however many times, you know, if I move it again, it's going to start sampling all over again, right? All those little boxes, all those little dots, those are samples. And it's saying how many samples you want. It's going to start at five and it's going to keep going up, keep going up until it re either reaches a thousand samples or the max amount of time that I allotted for it, which is 10 seconds here. So at 10 seconds, if it hits 10 seconds first, right it's gonna stop if it hits a thousand uh, samples first then that's gonna stop it right so this is how this renderer works. it's probably one of the easiest renderers you guys will ever have to encounter it's either I give it uh, so if I give it 790 seconds well that's a long time set up to 790 minutes or 790 hours and you don't want to do that I'm gonna do one and if I do minute so it's going to hit those thousand samples in, in a minute. So what's probably going to happen is it's going to uh, get to where it hits the samples and then it's going to stop. So depending on what I give it. So if I wanted to render for much longer, I can increase the samples or increase the time till it meets those samples. This is a very easy renderer to use. Uh, I expect you guys to, to really to really, you know, just pick it up and, and, and go with it. It's not something complicated. And I can hold down shift still, right, and rotate my light around. All right. That's still, that's still how I would rotate my light, you know. And you guys, don't give me some dark, you know, some dark, poorly lit coin either. Because what I see is you guys just let the computer determine where it's lighting it for you, and that's it. No. Give me a good lighting solution, a good lighting angle that looks good. I want to see, you know, like highlight the right areas. Look at the look at the reference again and see where the highlight is and try to mimic that, right? Mimic the good looking stuff that you see out there. Don't just let the computer decide what the lighting solution is going to be for you. You're the artist, not the computer, right? This stuff is just, it's just stuff, right? You should be able to think about this thoroughly whenever you do it for yourself so think through the lighting scenario think through what you're trying to do give me a good lighting situation right where you've moved around the light you've thought about it you found okay this highlight right here is really nice that's contrasting right and then you can even go into uh the the settings and start to mess with um the the environment settings the the brightness and things like that but uh whenever you render out your image I want you to click here override resolution and what you're going to do is 1920 by 1080 all right so it's going to give you your resolution and what you're going to do is you can save render so you're going to do that one you're going to do one like this well i don't, I don't even think you need to do that let's do 1200 again yeah don't do it that way because you're gonna have to crop it anyway after the fact so just render it however your computer's rendering it out so that you have your full image in the scene but save out the render as a jpeg png or whatever you're gonna do so you're gonna save out uh let's see coin uh 3q that stands for three quarter we're gonna go fall, let's go point renders, let's do new folder fall. Okay, we're gonna hit save. Alright, and then we're gonna turn it again. Front. Right. 
We're gonna let our render do its thing, right? It's gonna be rendering, 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 rendering either till it reaches a thousand or a minute is up. So whenever it does that, right, it's gonna say rendering, and then whenever you'll know it's done whenever it says when it's green right here, right? So this is this is what you guys should be watching for. Is whenever it's green right here, you know your render is done, and you can grab your image. So boom, right there. My image is done. I've still got a little bit of sprinkling in there, right? Like you guys can see. I don't know if you guys can see it from your screen, but I've still got some stuff in here. And if I wanted to, you know, clear that up, I could increase the max amount of samples in my scene. All right, but, uh, and for you guys, I want you guys to definitely clear those little sprinkles up. Uh, so I'm going to do save render again. I'm going to do instead of 3Q, I'm going to do front. All right, so this is my second render. And then I'm going to do another, just hold down Alt, middle mouse. And then I'm going to do a side one, just like so. And then I'm going to zoom in, make sure it's zoomed in. Right, I want the biggest image possible, right? Don't get like don't give me nothing like this, man. I'm trying to tell y'all now. Don't give me nothing like this. I want it like this. I want everything to to fill up the screen. Right? As much of it as possible. We're going to composite all of those together later. So just like that. Wait for it to render, right? Now you guys know the drill. Right, I'm waiting for it to either hit a thousand iterations, which is a thousand samples, or a minute. And I think it's going about 30 seconds before it hits that thousand. So um, that's the that's the the result that I'm getting from my computer. So you know, let's do save render, and then let's do side. All right, so you know, before I leave here, I can, I can definitely increase the environment exposure here and stuff like that, just so you guys know. And I expect you guys to go through a lot of this stuff and and see what all this stuff does on your own time, right? Experiment with this stuff. I don't, you know, this this is if you've done any photography before. You you know what all of this stuff uh, you know what all this stuff does, and I would implore you guys to just go check out you know, the tone mapping, the glares, and things like that. I don't, want, I don't want you guys to be doing it on this stuff, you know, because you know it's uh, so like I can I can introduce some glares and stuff, but I don't I don't want you guys to get too caught up in the gimmicks. I want you guys to get the modeling. Uh, in rendering part of it down right quick right and that's the interface boom the beauty stuff that's on you guys you guys need to now start growing an artistic eye figuring out okay when do you know do I when, when do I want to use a, a vignette right when do I when do I want to do things like that right and uh, maybe add a sharpen or a threshold and, and things like that to it but that's another that's another topic for another day, which is when do you start doing your kind of post process work? And we're not doing any post processing on this. This is just so you guys can have your high poly, low poly render uh, done. And whenever you guys have, have done that, right, you guys have saved out your three renders, your you know, those those three renders. I want you guys to do the same thing. Um, or do your final one, your final render of a wireframe, the wireframe of your of your coin. So you're gonna do one. Let me turn off this nonsense glare. So this is this is why you don't get caught in the the gimmicky stuff. All right, so um, let's go down to uh, 
the settings, I think we should display. It should be wireframe somewhere. Oh, so we can. I think you can't be using any of these guys. Post processing. Okay, so I need to go in here, um, show this, enable, and then go back in here. I should be seeing my um, oh, okay. Okay, why well, is subsurface scattering enabled? It's not skin. So I have to turn that off. I'm an isotrophic settings. Uh, let's see. Rotation. So you might just have to do your view in here and then turn on your post-processing stuff. Okay, yeah, so it shows up in here. I don't know why it's being stupid, but yeah. So I just need one uh, render of this as well. And that should be it. So once I have all of my renders, let me see. Okay, so then I can just, uh, let's see, I guess I'll have to use the list snipping tool, and then I can just grab this guy, just like so, 
file, save as. Documents. Full. Coin renders. And just save it in there. All right, so now that you've got all your renders and you're ready to go, what are you going to do next? You need to put all of these uh, together in a uh, graphic package of your choice. I hope you guys have Photoshop. I don't know if you guys do have Photoshop or not. Um, but if you guys don't have Photoshop, there's a program called PhotoP on online that is essentially Photoshop but a web braced browser and it can even open Photoshop files so uh, what I'm gonna do now is just navigate to my uh, to my renders and I'm just gonna drag all of them and I'm gonna actually make a do file new I'm just gonna make a 1920 by 1080 file hit create I'm just gonna drag all of my uh, files in there hit enter all right and since this works like Photoshop it's, it's relatively intuitive so uh, I'm gonna just drag this guy this guy I'm gonna pull this guy to the bottom all right, so I can turn this guy on now what I can do is, yeah. So I'm going to select this, this guy right here. And like Photoshop, I'm just going to mask out the only part that he exists in. So I'm going to do that. Mask it out. Boom. I can then move this guy to the middle of my screen. And it gives you guides too, so which is pretty cool. So you can know where the the middle of the page is, right there. And then I can turn this guy on. Let me turn this guy off. I'm going to do the same for all of them. Where I just mask out where uh, where the coin itself is. And it's not like a perfect mask. This is what I would call a garbage mask because it's something that doesn't have to be perfect. And you'll hear that term. Uh, quite a bit in CG, a garbage mask, where it's just a, it's essentially that, it's just a garbage mask, where you, you know, you're just, you don't really care about, uh, you know, where it is, all you care about is that it, it gives you what you need to do. So here's my last garbage mask that I'm making, just like that, and I can just, now I can, Grab all these guys. Start placing them in place. All right. So let's see, so control alt T, I'm gonna scale them down a little bit. Scale them down, scale them down just a little bit. So that they fit, hold down shift. So I so I'm uniformly scaling them. Just so gonna grab this guy, move this guy a little over. Move this guy a little over. Move this one over as well. Okay. Right. So now they've got, you know, their breathing room. I'm going to make another layer at the bottom. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this color picker, this eyedropper, and then I'm going to sample that color. And I'm going to hit G on the keyboard. This is going to bring up my gradient uh, tool or my paint bucket. So I'm just going to select the paint bucket. So if I hit G on the keyboard, it takes me in, in Photoshop. It works the exact same way. So if you hit G, right, it takes up, brings up either your gradient tool or your uh, paint bucket. I'm going to 
fill that background in so everything looks uniform now. All right. And I've still got my wireframe to deal with. So now I'm just going to grab my wireframe as well. And for this, actually, I'm going to use a ellipse marquee tool. So I'm just going to hit M. If I hit M twice, that'll get me that. So if I hold down shift, all right, let's see. Trying to get my uh, my ellipse game down. But it's in perspective, so it's going to be just a little harder. T. So now I've got my uh, UV, my one with the wireframe. I've got my uh, my regular one. So I'm just going to select this guy. Let's scale him down just so I have. Uh, I'm going go to move this these guys up a little bit. I'm trying to figure out a good. Trying to figure out a good lineup, and it might not even work on this one, so I might might leave it out of this one, and then just have you guys save this out uh, separately, just because it doesn't feel it doesn't fit the the entire thing. So uh, I'll definitely just leave it like this, and then just save out. Um, just save out the wireframe by itself and it's on its own layer or on its own image, right? Just cause it's gonna make this look too noisy and it's just gonna make it look off. So uh, what I'll do is I'm just gonna make a new folder for these and I'm gonna do coin, uh, then duplicate this guy, uh, then duplicate this background as well. The next thing I'm just, I'm just gonna merge these guys together so I can do some post work on it. So I'm just gonna do filter. Uh, let's do uh, unsharp mask. Just reduce it a little bit. All right. So the next thing I want you guys to do is, you guys are gonna put your name on it. You're gonna say, Fatai, Oye, uh, Mario, Coin, and then you're going to do Low Poly, Mario Coin Low Poly, and then you're going to tell me the poly count and the tri count. So you're going to do Poly, and then you're going to do Tri Count. So the poly count I can find in my 3ds Max folder. So right here, boom. I've got it selected. I've got 238 polygons and then 476 tries. So I'm gonna come in here, my polys. I'm gonna do 238, 476 if I'm not mistaken. Yep, 238 and 476. I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to make them white color. Hit OK. 
All right, and just like that, I'm gonna grab my name. I'm just gonna put it right here, wherever I have it justified to. And if you guys don't know what a justification is, so that's either you have something left justified, right justified, or centered. So in text, that means it's justified to the left, justified to the right, and then center. So if it's justified to the left, I want all my stuff to the left. If it's justified to the right, control Z, control Z, all right, just like that. So if I have it justified one way, right, I want it in that other section, right? So pick a justification and put it there. All right, put it in the corner. This way I know poly count, try count, four, seven, six, All right? And then if it's in the middle, middle. But don't do the middle one, All right? So that's pretty much it. That's uh, that's it right there. You've done your low poly. Uh, this is the Mario coin. So you're gonna do file export as uh, a JPEG, and then you're gonna increase it all the way to 100%. You want the quality at its best. You're gonna save it out here, all right? You should probably name it too. So you can name it Mario do underscore Mario coin All right. so now file export as JPEG save alright so now my Mario coin is exported now you're gonna go on artstation artstation.com you're going to sign in And you're going to manage your portfolio. Right? So you want to just create a new project. And this is where you're going to upload your files. You're going to upload your Mario coin. So you're going to upload your high poly and your low poly in here. Right, and then you're gonna give me the same information on here that you've given me on the actual coin itself. So you're gonna pick a thumbnail, you're gonna do all that fun stuff. You're gonna give me this information right here. You're gonna do Mario coin low poly. You're gonna control C, grab that, paste that into here. You're gonna tell me the poly count, and then you're going to save it and publish it. So if I have my high poly in here as well, so I'm going to find my high poly. So desktop, coin model, renders. So here is our high poly. So we've got our high poly, our low poly. And that's it. This is your final right here. All right? There's, you know, if you guys go through and you guys uh, go and set it, set up a scene or something for the coins itself, um, you can get a little extra credit there. But, you know, you don't have to if you don't want to. What I'm talking about is if you set up a scene like this where it's got, uh, where I did something like that. So if you go ahead and you set up a scene something that looks like that, that you can use as like the banner or something, right? Like that, that is, uh, that is acceptable. So let me put it in my uh, product visualization. Okay, so I'm gonna call this Mario coin model Mario coin just 
called the Mario Corn. And then instead of product viz, I'm just gonna leave it anywhere. I've got my uh, my scene here. Let's crop that. And then publish. So once this is published, I will get a notification that one of my students has done awesome artwork, and then I can come and check it. And this is how I check your final. This is your final. Uh, for this project right here. So I select that, I can see, ooh, okay, ooh la la, that looks good, whoa, look at this awesomeness. And he's got his low poly in here. And if you got your wireframe, post a wireframe under it, and I can see, oh look, that's his polygons, that's his tri count, boom, I know what he's doing, he knows what he's doing, good to go, all right? So yeah, this is it, this is how you finish this coin, this is, it. You can't say I didn't show you. You can't say I didn't walk you through it. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the process. Uh, you repeat this process over and over and over and over and over and over again, and one day you may become an artist. Joking. Um, but yeah, you guys do need to finish this. Does anybody have any questions on the process that I've shown you so far? I'm going to post this up uh, once again, guys, so you guys have this entire process. Uh, for yourselves to go back and check on and see if you're doing it right. Um, so yeah, anybody have any questions for me before uh, I dismiss you guys from this class? I missed the start of Thursday's class. What are we doing with that still drawing? Are we just drawing that image you posted? Yeah, draw the image and then post it on your in your drawing threads. Okay. Yep. Any other questions? None? So you guys understand it. So I'm going to go, so next class, I'm going to go on your pages and everybody's just going to have all their stuff going, right? Because y'all not asking questions now. I'm right here. Right here, guys. Ask the questions that you need answered. Nothing? All right, cool. Well, if you guys don't have any questions, you guys are dismissed from my class. Hopefully, you guys are working on your stuff. Don't forget to post, 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 post. Do your work and then post and then post some more. All right, guys, uh, have a good rest of your day. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys on Wednesday. Wednesday, right? Yeah, when's that? Yes. Peace. 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 Peace and love, guys. Peace and love.